We're going to do a reading from Lucian, a great ancient Roman writer, and um, it's about Polyphemus the Cyclops. Cyclops is a one-eyed giant. If you know about Polyphemus, you probably know about him from the Odyssey, or maybe from the movie Ulysses, where Odysseus, Kirk Douglas, put out his eye to escape from him. This was the only story told about Polyphemus for many years. Centuries passed, and he was still the same frightful monster, shapeless, huge, his eye put out. But finally he changed, as what is ugly and evil is apt to change and grow milder with time. Perhaps some storyteller saw the helpless, suffering creature Odysseus left behind as a thing to be pitied. At all events, the next story about him shows him in a very pleasing light, not terrifying at all, but a most poor, credulous monster, a most ridiculous monster. Quite aware of how hideous and uncouth and repulsive he was, and therefore wretched, because he was madly in love with the charming, mocking sea nymph Galatea. And when we read the dialogue later, Gal Galatea will be played by Norman and um, I will be Doris, her, her sister. By this time, the place where he lived was Sicily, and he had somehow got his eye back, perhaps by some miracle of his father, who in this story is Poseidon, the great god of the sea. The lovelorn giant knew Galatea would never have him. His case was hopeless, and yet, whenever his pain made him harden his heart against her and bid himself milk the you you have, <laughs> it's kind of like love the one you're with, why pursue what shuns you? The minx would come softly stealing near him, and then suddenly a shower of apples would pelt his flock, and her voice would ring in his ears, calling him a laggard in love. But no sooner was he up and after her than she would be off, laughing at his slow clumsiness when he tried to follow her. All he could do was to sit wretched and helpless on the shore, but this time not trying in fury to kill people only singing mournful love songs to soften the sea nymph's heart. That story that we just heard is from Theocritus. He was one of the pastoral poets. And Theocritus always likes to get around to, oh, it was so sad, and then he sings the sad, sad songs. And there's nothing like the blues to cure the blues. In a much later story, but we don't think it's later. We think it's a lot earlier. I think the story may have been told later, but it's it happened earlier in time. Uh, Galatea turned kind, not because the exquisite, delicate, milk-white maid, as Polyphemus called her in his songs, uh, fell in love with the hideous one-eyed creature. In this tale, too, he had got back his eye, or maybe not lost it yet, we think. Uh, but because she prudently reflected that he, he was the favored son of the Lord of the Sea, and by no means to be despised. So she told her sister nymph, Doris, who had rather hoped to attract the Cyclops herself, and who began the talk by saying scornfully, A fine lover you've got, that Sicilian shepherd. Everybody's talking about it. None of your heirs, please. He's the son of Poseidon. There. Zeus is for all I care. One thing's certain, he's an ugly, ill-mannered brute. Just let me tell you, Doris, there is something very manly about him. Of oh, course, manly. <laughs> of course, it's true, he's got only one eye, but he sees as well with it as if he had two. It sounds as if you were in love yourself. I? In love? With Polyphemus? No! I, but of course I can only guess why you're talking like this. You know perfectly well he has never noticed you, only me. A shepherd with only one eye thinks you handsome. <laughs> uh, that's something to be proud of. Anyway, you won't have to cook for him. Uh, he can make a very good meal off a traveler, I understand. But Polyphemus never won Galatea. She fell in love with the beautiful young prince, Asis, or maybe his name is Assis, or, or uh, uh, as is, whom Polyphemus furiously, jealously killed. 
However, Aces was changed into a river god, so that story ended well, says Edith Hamilton here in this book. Um, that story ended well, but we are not told that Polyphemus ever loved any maiden except Galatea, or that any maiden ever loved Polyphemus. 